Yeah. That's, that's President McMenamin getting back at me for my lousy joke. I was paying right? attention a little bit the last so, couple <laughs> No, well, then, no, we should do this formally. Uh, coming around the bend here, Councilor Darcy, Councilor Katz, Councilor Bradley MacArthur, Councilor and State Rep Tom Stanley, Councilor Paz, Councilor Dunn, Councilor Durkee, on the other side, Councilor Harris, uh, Councilor Vidal, Councilor LaFosse, President McMiniman, Councilor LeBlanc, and Councilor O'Brien. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Very nice. The clerk could read the next new matter. A request of the mayor for the approval of a financing plan in the amount of $4.5 million for the acquisition of a property located at One Bomb Ave for horticultural, agricultural, recreational, and educational uses. Councilor Dunn, you rise. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, due to the proximity of my home to this property, I will be recusing myself from any voting for the, this matter and the next two matters on the docket. Okay, thank you very much. Councilor Dunn has recused herself. Um, if I could ask Councilor Durkin and Councilor Harris to um, invite the mayor into the chamber. All rise. <laughs> Welcome, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Please be seated. Okay. Mr. President, Vice President, is it the first matter? Uh, it is the matter uh, regarding the financing plan. Financing plan, okay. Thank you. Madam Mayor, just so I can, just so we get ahead of ourselves, we don't need to go into executive session or anything tonight, correct? No, we don't. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, if I could just put this over here for a minute, Mr. Vice President. Absolutely, thank you. So everybody's... Uh, plan council Darcy. thank you yeah thank you very much for coming in here this evening um, I support the acquisition of the farmland however uh, the ward two neighbors and direct abutters to the five acre farm located at one bomb Avenue um, need to weigh in on the matter and for those that of you that are watching from home, the elected Ward 2 official, Councillor Dunn, very unfortunately must recuse herself from any and all discussion and on voting on the matter since she is a direct abutter at 58 Mount Wally Road. Um, Massachusetts Open Meeting Law does not allow elected officials who are abutters from participating in discussion or voting as for potential conflicts of interest. The Ward 2 residents and neighbors need to weigh in on the, on, to the City Council as they have not had proper representation due to the recusal of Ward Councilor Dunn. The direct abutters and nearby neighbors of the farm include hundreds of residents living at Mount Vernon, Mount Wally, Mount Ida, Piedmont, Fir, Sac, um, 
Satcham, Rosemont, Trimont, Montclair, and College Farm Road, just to name a few. So that being the case, and mind you, I support the acquisition of this farm, but I move that, that the City Council host a citizen input hearing at the Council on Monday, April 11th at 6.30 to get feedback from the neighbors and residents concerning the acquisition of the parcel and the council verbiage on the order concerning the specific purposes of the acquisition. That's my motion, Mr. Chair. So um, you've heard a sense of the motion. Um, any questions? <laughs> Councilor Harris. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Just point of clarification. Um, we have how many at-large councilors on our city council? Six. And those at-large councilors represent the entire city, is that correct? They do. So uh, just stating for the record, um, I know that the ward councilor had to recuse. Those are the rules. It would be the case for me if, if we had any sort of conflict. That's to protect ourselves in the city. And in the case of any conflict and also to follow state law, which is an open meeting law. But there, are, there is representation for Ward 2 through the at-large councillors, and that is our form of government, which is representation. So I want to make sure, as we state our passions for the record, that we also state clearly what is uh, truly representative, because there are people who door knocked in Ward 2 and got elected for that, and that would be the case in, in all the wards that the at-larges represent as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, President McMiniman. Thank you, Mr. President. So this is an interesting um, idea because um, many of us have conflicts all over the city. I have a conflict constantly, constantly with the frontal property. And no one's ever said to me or anybody on this council, let's stop what we're doing so we can hear from the Ward 3 neighbors. Um, before I would vote to support this idea, I will state that I want to hear everything about the matter tonight, so I'm going to move to table the motion. On the motion to table the motion, all those roll call. Roll call has been requested. So, Mr. Vice President, point of information. Council pass. Point of information, so voting yes moves the question. No, this tables is on the, tables the motion. table the motion to have a public hearing on April 11th at um, 6.30 p.m. So what's a yes do and what does a no do? Yes means we table that motion that okay. goes to the table. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Council O'Brien. Mr. Vice President, just um, so after if this motion gets tabled, and then there's a presentation. At the end of it, the Ward 3 Councilor could then move to take it off the table again. Sure, correct? Yep. All right, thank you. If the clerk could call Council LaCava. Council LaCava. Right. So this, if we just state that, um, this is a motion to table the motion. Um, and a yes vote would table that, and then we'd move on to the presentation. Mr. Clerk. Councilor Bradley MacArthur. Yes. Councilor Darcy. No. Councilor Don is recused. Councilor Durkee. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Katz. Yes. Councilor LaCava. Yes. Councilor LaFosse. Yes. Councilor Blank. Yes. President McMiniman. Yes. Council O'Brien. Yes. Councilor Paz. Yes. Councilor Stanley. Yes. Councilor Vidal. Yes. 
12 in favor, one opposed. The motion accused. The motion carries. The uh, motion is tabled. Um, Councilor Darcy, you stole the floor. Madam. I said, do you have any question about the, this plan? So I didn't even discuss anything respectfully. Understood. Councilor Darcy. Thank you. Um, could the mayor please explain to us um, the financing aspect? Because that's what's before us right now, the financing of the $4.5 million. Why isn't this a loan order? And there was some Since what's before us is the money? Correct. I'd be happy to discuss anything about money. But before I do that, there are three questions I think that have to be answered. Should we purchase it? What we do with it? And who, who will have care, custody, and control? So with regard to the specific request, I respectfully request approval of the following financing plan for the land taking of the property located at One Balm Avenue in the amount of $4,500,000. The purpose of the intended acquisition is horticulture, agriculture, recreation, and all education use or a combination thereof. Since a loan order cannot be approved within the needed time frame, I respectfully request an appropriation of $4.5 million from the unreserved fund balance. From, un from unreserved fund balance, number 1000-3590-3590-4.5 to Mayor Land Acquisition 1 Bomb 001-121-5800-613003. In addition, I respectfully request the City Council approve the attached loan authorization in the amount of $4.5 million. The appropriation request from unreserved fund balance will be rescinded at the time the loan authorization is finally approved. And we have done that, as the City Auditor knows, with several of the transactions that we have done. So that's the answer to the question in my communication to the City Council dated March 23rd. 2022. Thank you. And um, what is what was the needed time frame? What's the is it a month or two months or? Ne the needed time frame is for the first reading, and then has to go with publication. And after the publication, it has to come back for a second and third reading. So, Mr. Clerk, how, how much time is that? Well, if you were to give it a first reading tonight, it wouldn't be able to be published until next Thursday and then it would require 10 days before you could give it a final reading, and after final reading, there's a 20-day referendum period to satisfy. So about a month is what you're saying? Uh, maybe closer to two months. Two months, okay, great. Um, that's all the questions I have, but I'm gonna move approval of the financing of the 4.5 million. On the motion, um, Madam Mayor. The only thing I would like to say for the record is this. The owner of this property has, has received two, and this is a notarized statement as to the truth, has received a, an offer from MI Development to buy it for 4700000 an offer from Baystone Development offered to buy it for 4750 and other residential developers wanting to develop in Waltham have indicated their definite interest in buying at the above price if high, if I decide to put up for sale. As you know, counselors, the, the person came to us, the owner. Now, I would like to say two other things, if I could, Mr. President, Vice President. Absolutely. Now, those two developers are multifamily de developers. So this is a five acre parcel. It's surrounded by mostly neighbors and the, the direct abutter to it is the city of Waltham. Under the governor's bill, a five-acre parcel are able to petition to the ZBA or the city council if they wanted to do multifamily, but the transportation over here does not qualify for the MBTA, I don't believe, because they eliminated that bus in North Waltham. If they were to reinstitute the bus, it may be. What's the significance of that is you only need eight votes of city councils instead of 10 to be able to do that if you rezone the property. 
this five-acre parcel, okay, is just that. It doesn't mean you couldn't put a Chapter 40B over here. And quite frankly, I have a history, and I don't want to go through it, but I can, of all the open space purchases that we worked on together, including Smith Street, 16 acres, 287 Grove Street, 1.967 acres, 81 Arcadia Avenue, 0.134 acres, 167 before Lincoln Street, 226.339 acres, better known as Sanderson Heights, 385 Chapello Road, one acre, 342 Warren Street, the Arrigo Farm number one, 4.055 acres, the 48 acres at the Stigmatines, which was originally going to be a minimum of 200, 327 units to 600 units was their last number that they gave to us. And you could not tell this talk to the city of Waltham at all until the 40B application was filed with the ZBA. The Gables Children Unit on Lexington, I mean at Trapello Road, which is now known as Mackerel Hill, 7.35. Lot 1 on Trapello Road, 6.45 acres. The Farmer Fernald School, 190 acres. The Farmer Our Ladies Land, 34 acres. And we also, together, and that's what I'm talking about, we work together, help them secure the rectory land from the state. 240 Beaver Street, 28 acres. Not including all the other parcels that were bought by previous elected officials prior to 2004. We also negotiated the gift of Berry Farm, the former Polaroid parcel, adjacent to Prospect Hill, 20.85 acres. Almost all the parks and playgrounds have been upgraded or renovated. The Veterans Rink has a long term lease, thanks to the actions of the mayor and city council. The Veterans Fields, the bike path, the rail trail. Ward Avenue is being cleared. So the open space and recreation has been a joint goal of both this city council, prior city councils, and the neighbors and everybody else. So I just want to say that for the record. Thank you, and Madam. this parcel, as you know, is right in the middle of Lakeview, and I feel that we should acquire it. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Mayor. Council Vidal. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for you to the mayor. Mayor, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, this is a, a very important uh, purchase, in my opinion, uh, and, and lately we've been buying a lot of farmland, and this adds to our stock of farmland in the city of Waltham. Back in 2018, during my second term as an at-large counselor, I recall the former War II counselor, uh, submitted a resolution in which I believe I co-signed in which we were looking into purchasing this property back then. But back then, things, they were a bit different, but at the same time, we didn't get an approval or a support from the school committee. And I know right now we're just talking about the money, and you mentioned that clearly, and I understand that. And back then, there were different numbers than the numbers there are now. At one point tonight, we're going to be talking about giving this property to the school department. Mm -hmm. So my question is, do we have any sort of interest? Or does that interest that they did not have in 2018 um, still there? Well, first, of, first of all, I have to say for the record, the school committee couldn't be interested because the heirs were fighting with each other. So the city solicitor at the time attempted to get the property in response to the resolution. They weren't able to do it. So then they, you know, somebody else bought it privately. Um, I, to answer the question specifically, I have met with the school committee and discussed it with them, and they are in support. Okay. Thank you very much. That definitely clear, uh, clears up that scenario because I wasn't. I was aware of some sort of discussion among the people who owned the property back then, but I wasn't aware to what degree. But the, what I do remember from 2018 was that that we couldn't really. There was no interest, and in, I guess some of that reason behind that. And now the fact that you're telling us right now that the school department, the school committee, is interested in that property, um, that kind of helps me uh, make this more clear. Uh, that's my only question for now. I think I have another question when the, when we get to the part about custody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Council Bradley Bather. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you to the mayor, thank you for being here tonight. I am curious about some of the language, specifically uh, recreational use, a definition of recreational. Could that include athletic fields or parking lots? Well, it, it can include athletic fields, you know, grass fields, can include that. Um, but walking the site, uh, the current owner has cleared most of the farm. It, you know, the farm was very well overgrown. So he's cleared it mostly. There is another area, you know, there's on the right towards Sachem, it drops way down. Um, as you go back, you know, I walked it specifically on both sides to go up and down it. There is a little bit of flat area right when you leave the farm. There's some there. Other than that, it's all declines. So um, the land could come out um, where the wetland is right now. You could get there if you follow. So if you traverse along the uh, western part of the boundary, you could actually come in, but you really have a hard time getting up that, that ravine there. <clears throat> but on the other side, you could come down and where the first uh, natural field at the um, new high school is right there, you could come in over there. That would be the natural spot. You could also walk to school from, from this as well by the access. And I'm not suggesting that we go through and open up those two streets, but there is an access right now that goes through. And uh, the current owner has deeded rights to go from um, Mount Wally through and then come through there. So they could have some children in the area that walk to school there and come through the high school that way. Thank you. And uh, so to answer your question specifically, there's only two flat areas up right near where the farm is on the other side of the rock wall. And they would have to be, you know, small areas. Okay. Thank they you. They have recreation there. Thank you. And a another question just to the language. Um, why not include uh, passive recreational use as a definition as opposed to just well, recreational? Horticulture is passive, I believe. And educational use is, act, is passive as well. So Great. And uh, one last question uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the mayor. Uh, does the definition of educational use include anything related to uh, parking lots or athletic fields? Educational use is a very broad use, and I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not. Okay. But it is broad. Um, but it has to be related to the educational use. It can't be for something... You know what I mean? And naturally, they would have to come for money to do anything to this property. They, you know, they couldn't just do it. With the exception of the farm. And the, the owner of the property has agreed, because he's been farming all his life. Um, you know, when you call the Casella, the Mantenuto, Arrigo, you know, there were a lot of farms at, at the time. But he is committed to at least two years of teaching the students um, as part of the farming process here. And... He, you know, he likes it. Um, he probably will donate much of the equipment at the end as well, but he hasn't indicated that he wishes to give up farming yet. And I think that's a good stewardship that he would be able to provide some educational um, oversight. And honestly, he would like to have some young students to help him um, with the farm as well because, you know, it's a lot of work. Thank you. No more questions? Thanks. Thank you. Um, so this motion is for the approval of the appropriation of $4.5 million. On the motion, Councilor LaCava. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, question to you or the clerk here. I apologize. Are we asking all questions in general? I know um, the Councilor to my right stopped asking questions in terms of the care custody control. Is this just about the money currently before us? So the, the, we've got three matters um, on the agenda for tonight for BOMAB. This matter has to do with the uh, financing plan for the 4.5, and specifically this motion right now from Council Adasi is approval of the appropriation for 4.5. We'll have a second motion after that for the approval of the loan authorization for a first reading. Okay, so I'll try to keep it to the finances could, at this yep. point. Okay, thank you cool. for the clarification. Um, 
how many um, different numbers did you get in, uh, did we get for this? Did, is this the number given to you from the seller? Was this? We received an appraisal, as you are aware. We received an appraisal. He had a different figure, so I had to go back to our appraiser to determine if the value of the appraisal and that figure was within the appraised value, and I have that. So your appraisal was lower than the? Yes, that's correct. As you are you know. allowed to, to um, divulge that number? It's in, I can divulge it. I don't have any problem to not divulge it. I'm in a public meeting. Four million thirty thousand dollars, and then the high and low range went from, excuse me, one minute, I have to find that page. That, Madam Mayor, honestly, that, that number works right for right now for my question, so you don't have to keep going. You don't have to keep digging. So then the number, so the appraiser that did the original appraiser came back and said, if you base between the high and low numbers that they had, the 4.5 is within that number. So it looks, it looks like something came in closer to five then and four and a half in the middle. Well, um, the, 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 two, the two offers that he sure. has is more than the 4.5 and uh, a few years ago when you there was talk of the city trying to buy it there just was no communication from from the owners no nope. the owners were in a petition to partition so he at the city solicitor actually went and communicated with them and talked to them and um, he was able to communication with some of the heirs but he was not able to communication with the other heirs so they each had own lawyers and they eventually went to court so with each other and do we know why that when this went to a private sale, the city, and I'm not saying they had to, I'm just curious as to why there was no communication with the mayor, with the city, when the time to sell actually came? That's correct. There was none that I'm aware of, because I asked the, uh, the city solicitor that. Did you have any more communication when I found out that it was sold? He said no. And was there any attempt from to purchase it from the current owner um, in the last two years before this? He, w he was not interested in even talking to me at the time. Okay. For another, there was another matter that we were handling and he was, it was on another street. So he wasn't really too happy with me, to, and I'll be quite frank with you. Okay. Um, I guess these are all my financial questions at the time, so. I'm all set for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Second time around, Councillor Vidal. Thank you very much. I forgot to ask a question. Mayor, uh, through you, Mr. Vice President, to the Mayor. The Again, we'll, we'll try to keep within the financial, but I think this has a lot to do with what we're buying. So I had a chance to review the plot plan for this property. and. As this is going to be a friendly taking. Are, are there any easements on this property? He has an easement that comes from um, Mount Wally. Okay. In. But once that is, once you 
how this friendly taken? Do uh, the easements get erased, therefore we get a, a clean, marketable title, or how, how does that work? The easement remains with the property? I would have to ask the, the city attorney that. Yep. There is currently one easement um, related to this property, and it's to the benefit of this property. It's an access easement across um, property to the north that allows access from Mount Wally mm -hmm. onto this parcel. So the taking order that we have drafted would retain that, um, that access right, mm -hmm. um, and it would be part of the, what was taken. So we basically have followed the chain of title. The taking would reflect what's currently on record. Um, so it wouldn't ex extinguish that easement, but it would be part of the rights that were acquired by the city. Okay, so it, so then the title will reflect pretty much, we'll just exchange names, but the easement will remain with it as it has for many other previous years. That's correct, yes. Okay. And the, the fact that you said you, it benefits the property, to, to what degree does this easement benefit the property? It provides access from this property to Mount Wally Street. Okay, but it's, a, it's a, like a right of way easement. So is, is, there isn't any sort of, uh, like it's, let's say, utility easement. It's not that sort of thing. It's a, a like a way. It's, it's a, just a way, like the, like the a right paper, to, like, to pass and repass. Okay, okay, that's all there is. There is no sewer easement or any sort of like no. underground easement. Okay, all right. Um, so then we will have a, a full, clean, clear, marketable title with the easement. Yes, that okay. is correct. All right. That was my only question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> President McManaman. So uh, it is and it isn't directly related to the financing, but it would help my concept to understand a little bit more about, about this. Um, so if I might ask uh, the mayor and the attorney, our attorney, um, if we purchase the property for this amount of money and the right to the easement as a passageway comes along with that purchase to us, conversely, if we were not the purchaser of the property and it were to go to a private party, would the right to that easement and passage over that easement go to the private party? Um, yes, it would. That's part of the chain of title and part of the deed as it exists. So, so, so let's take that a step further. So if it's not the city and it's a private party, what is the land zoned as? A1? It's A2. A2. So if I re recall, um, the um, intense discussion that this city council went through several years ago regarding this property, um, we were made aware that the purchaser was purchasing with the possibility, number one, not to keep it totally agricultural, but if it were to be developed under the A2 guidelines, what would be the number of dwelling units that that land could have then? This is then, before the governor's bill of five acres. That's then. So there is um, a plan that was drawn up, a feasibility plan for this property. It hasn't gone to the Board of Survey and Planning, but that feasibility plan shows 11 lots on this property. So would those 11 lots go into a subdivision plan? And if it were to do that, it would need two separate means of access and egress. Am I correct? Yes, I'll get that. So this parcel has access not just through the easement, but also um, Mount Ida and I, Mount I, Vernon. I've been up there. I've, I, the day those first trees came down, I was up there every single day. I saw a couple of my friends up there watching. I've been up there more than once. I know the 
topography of the land. I know the height of the northern part of the land versus the other side. I, I'm very familiar. I'm just trying to get to the point here with the money and the other possibilities of what could go there. So a subdivision plan could be filed with 11 house lots. Based on the feasibility plan that the current owner had drafted, that's what it shows. Again, it has not yet been to the planning board for approval, but um, it appears that that is a, a feasible possibility for this for this parcel based on the lot area, the minimum lot size, and the need for um, an access roadway. And if we, so, so the two means of access and egress are there, and so it would go with to us, and therefore, if we gave care custody and crow, we we'll go to the school committee, a school department. Um, if it remains with the owner, then that owner is then going to be free to negotiate with those facets attached to the land, negotiate whatever that owner is going to negotiate with the buyer. Correct. Now, if there were to be a an application for a comprehensive permit, I won't say the word, but we all know what that means. But if there were to be an application for a comprehensive permit, would all of those facets that I just elaborated on run with the land for that comprehensive permit? Yes, they would. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. So the motion before us is to approve the appropriation of $4.5 million. On the motion, roll call. Roll call. Roll call's been requested. Councilor Bradley MacArthur? Yes. Councilor Darcy? Yes. Councilor Dunn is recused. Councilor Durkee? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Katz? Yes. Councilor LaCava? No. Councilor Fossey? Yes. Councilor Blank? Yes. President McMiniman? Yes. Councilor O'Brien? Yes. Councilor Paz? Yes. Councilor Stanley? Yes. Councilor Vidal? Yes. All in favor, one opposed, one recused. The matter passes. Um, Councilor Dassey uh, makes a motion for to approve a loan authorization, uh, this loan authorization for $4.5 million for a first reading. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. If the clerk could read the next new matter. A request of the mayor for the approval of a friendly taking of the property located at 1 Bomb Ave for the cultural, agricultural, recreational, and educational uses. Madam Mayor. So the next item is the uh, friendly taking order that was prepared by Attorney Lockman, and um, she has approved it as to form and with all the things that she has previously stated tonight to you. Thank you. Councilor Dossi. Um, Mr. President, this is concerning the council order, the taking. This is approval of a friendly, uh, correct, yep, thank the you. friendly taking, yep. Thank you very much. Um, in my few discussions with some of the neighbors of Ward 2, um, I've only had a few, and that's why I asked for an input hearing next week. Um, the neighbors do not want large parking lots, buildings, stadiums, 
as would be allowed under the current language of the council order as proposed by the mayor. Um, the existing council order language is too general. In its current form, we are setting up ourselves for another Jericho Hill, in which an environmentally important and geographically significant parcel of land, which was acquired by all intents and purposes for open space, but not suitably protected because the language on the council order stated was for, quote, all municipal purposes, end quote. Basically, anything goes. Um, the mayor's verbiage in this current order states for all educational purposes, which could include parking lots, stadiums, roadways, buildings, and other structures. Hence, I move to um, modify the second sentence in the council order to read as follows. The purpose of the intended acquisition of One Bomb Avenue is for horticulture, agriculture, and educational uses related to the same whilst preserving the entirety of the land in perpetuity as open space, farmland, or passive recreation. This language will ensure that the historic Arrigo farm will be protected in perpetuity as open space for farming and passive recreation. That's my motion. Thank you. On the motion. Point of order, Mr. Vice President. Madam Mayor. I think you have to read what the order says first. And the order that says, it says the first sentence, not second sentence, that the following pro described property, including all buildings and trees thereon, be and hereby is taken by right of eminent domain in fee for the municipal purposes of, unlike in the past, it said for municipal purposes. This says specifically of horticulture, agriculture, recreation, and all educational uses or a combination thereof. That is the first sentence. The second sentence is this taking is made under the provisions of Chapter 79 and all and every power there to enabling. So respectfully, the only, uh, there is language in there. I, I don't want everybody to think that it's the same as for all municipal You're purposes. arguing there's language in there to protect. There is language in there, yeah. respectfully. You, you know, they might not like what the language is, but the, it's not for all municipal purposes, and I don't want that to be conveyed out there. It's for those purposes stated there, education, recreation, agriculture, or a horticulture or a combination. Thank you, Mr. President. Vice Second President. time around, Councilor Darcy. Yeah, the point that I was trying to make is that by stating all educational uses, that doesn't prohibit a stadium, a parking lot, um, roadways, buildings, and other structures. It's different than for all municipal purposes, but it still allows everything in anything. And I think if we're acquiring this parcel, this um, parcel for farmland and for open space, then let's state it in the order. Why are we opening the envelope to many other things that could go there? And that's why I wanted to have the neighbors in here, because I want them to weigh in. Maybe they do want that, but we don't know, because they didn't have a ward council that could lobby on their behalf. But that's, that's, that's my yeah, two cents. Can, Thank you. I can just say for the record, Mayor. so this, the same thing, when you have farm day, that's a recreational use. So if you don't allow some recreational uses, then, then it's going to be very difficult to do anything other than horticulture and agriculture. So respectfully, I'm not asking, I've already re agreed to restrict the, the, the stadium and the school committee is going forward with Leary Field. So this, this here is not my intention and most importantly, they would have to come to get money from any city council, whether it be this one or the future and any mayor, you know, and this mayor is not going to have a stadium or parking lots or all that because we have that on the main site. I want to say one other thing for the record. No city council, no school committee, and, you know, our mayor should have to go through the process that we had to go through. The issue of not 
overburdening the land. I have a record on that. This property was very sensitive, but for the first time in many, many years, including with the former high school, they don't properly plan. This is adjacent to the high school. That's the reason, one of the reasons why I have recommended limiting it and not putting it for all municipal purposes, respectfully to the council. And that's to, to you, to you, Mr. Vice President, to the Councilor from Ward 3. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Third time around, Councilor. Thank Dossi. you. I'm in no way questioning your commitment to open space. You've been a champion since you began office in the year 2004. All I'm saying is that if it's our intent to acquire this for farmland and for passive recreation and for agriculture, then it should be stated explicitly by adding in all educational uses you're putting at risk, not for you, but for a mayor in the future could decide, I'd like a stadium there. It's very nice and flat. And, and the neighbors are going to have a difficulty with that, a great difficulty. So that's why, yeah. if, if it were me, um, I would constrict the language to protect the neighbors. Um, so could I have a roll call on my motion? Uh, before that, yeah. uh, Councilor Fossey. Mr. Vice President, through you to the mayor, um, I hear what you're saying, Mayor. Horticultural, agriculture, recreation, edu educational uses. I mean, we don't know what the future holds, and you kind of don't want to pigeonhole yourself into limiting. But did I hear correctly that something as simple as even a parking lot would have to come before the city council as a, as a request? that we couldn't just, it, future mayors down the line aren't just gonna be able to develop this property? Is that, is that a true statement? They wouldn't have the money to do it. So you, and, they, and it's not, where the farm is, is level, okay? The, there's a, another little level area on the other side of the farm where the rock wall is. The rest of it goes down. So, my, my, my point is the, the neighbors, the residents will have representation. They, it will never be wake up one morning and, and paved a parking lot. It has to come back before us. There will be a Ward 2 counselor. There will be 15 members of this body that would have to appropriate funds before anything could happen. Short of that, it remains as a field as is right no, now. sort of that. Right now, it's a farm. Yeah. Mr. So. Matt Nudo cleared the property to make a working farm. He did it over a period of a couple, two, three years. So he cleared one section. He cleaned up all around it. And he was very mindful of involving the neighbors in that process, particularly on Mount Wally. On the other side, there's a huge ravine that goes down to get up to Sachem's side. So, <clears throat> but the flat area of this land is currently the farm that was created again by Mr. Mandoto. So, thank thank you. I've I've had the opportunity to to walk it as well, and uh, I support that language that you have here. Um, and not altering it in any way. So thank you. Thank you, Council of Fossey. Council of Harris. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President, through you to the mayor, mayor or, or to the clerk. Can we read the order as stated? We came in here and kind of, you know, jumped right in the middle. And I, I think what we've got to do is walk it back a little bit. And passions run high uh, on this issue, and they, they have for, for this site. But this council came together voted to create a school, and now we have a unique opportunity to obtain yet another five-acre parcel of open space adjacent to an educational facility that we're investing $300 million in. I'd like the order read as is, so it's very clear to this council what is before us. Thank you. Okay, so um, we, we have a motion before us to change some language. Um, I'm interested in what actually was brought forward in the original proposal versus the change. Okay, it's two, it's two pages long. We can have the clerk read that. 
The mayor highlighted it, so if we could just go to the area of concern. I'm going to ask the clerk if he'd read the, the first two paragraphs. That I think that covers what you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President, M Vice President. Ordered that the following described property, including all buildings and trees thereon, be and hereby is taken by right of eminent domain in fee for the municipal purposes of horticulture, agriculture, recreation, and all educational uses or combination thereof. This taking is made under the provisions of Chapter 79 of the Massachusetts General Laws and by every other power hereto enabling. Said property consists of a certain parcel of vacant land situated in Waltham, Middlesex County, Massachusetts, being parcel one on the deed dated October 4th, 1952, recorded with the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds in book 7974, page 156, containing five acres and more completely shown on plan number 828 of 2020 at the South Middlesex Registry of Deeds as follows. Thank you very much. I appreciate that enumeration. So um, in here, and what you just clearly stated for the record, uh, and I want to thank you for that, is for the municipal purposes thereof. And then there's a numeration of the farming, agriculture, education. So through you, uh, Mr. Vice President, to either the mayor or the attorney for the city, what can you put there? I mean, we're splitting hairs over a word. That's what it sounds like to me. And we just clearly stated what's in the order. So before we take this vote, what can you put there based on that language? With the current zoning? Correct. I don't believe all those other things can go in there, you know. But I'm going to the purpose have... of this language that you put in okay. here The is purpose to... of the education is because it's next to the high school, okay? And with it being next to the high school, it's not the main part of the high school. It's five acres. So right now, they would have to comply with the existing zoning. And educational, recreation, and horticulture complies with the existing zoning. I don't know if, um, if Attorney Lockman has anything further. I'm not, honestly, the zoning person to talk. So under education, recreation, and horticulture, please approach. Attorney Lockman, can you put a stadium there? Um, so educational uses, um, as many of you are aware, do carry some level of protection under zoning under the Dover Amendment. So there is some flexibility with respect to the types of educational uses that, that can be placed on a, on a parcel in a residential zoning district, which is the reason that the school was able to be constructed where, where it is. Um, however, the, the parcel size limitations, the setbacks, the height restrictions, all of those dimensional requirements still come into play and you reasonably regulate those educational uses um, to, to fit the, the nature of the neighborhood. Um, so there is some leeway, but again, constrained by dimensional uh, requirements and reasonable regulations in zoning. Okay. So the language that starts this off, municipal purposes thereof, and then you enumerate these others. It, that is a restriction that you're putting forward here. Yes, this is actually very narrowly restricted. Horticulture and agriculture, you can do um, farming activities, yeah. which are allowed by right in this area on five acres anyway. So that is within the scope of zoning. So the, the horticulture and agricultural farming activities are a zoning approved use. Recreation and all educational uses, um, or combinations thereof is again a very narrow restriction with respect to the the connection to the high school um, and and again those would have to be within the dimensional regulations of the zoning ordinance so I, I think that you've clearly outlined what is before us and I really do appreciate both you and the mayor explaining that and the clerk reading that before us I, I'm, I'm gonna support this as is as it's presented I, I, in no way do I wish to change it thank you so the motion on the floor by Councillor Dossi Councillor Dossi I'm just gonna ask you to repeat the changes you'd like to see made in the order so starting at um, the second sent uh, sorry the second line horticulture 
I'm going to replace, the, or I propose to replace that with horticulture, agriculture, and educational uses related to the same, whilst preserving the entirety of the land in perpetuity as open space, farmland, or passive recreation. You've heard a sense of the motion. Could I get a the roll call? A roll call has been requested. Council of Fossey. How many votes are needed for this motion to pass? Simple majority. Thank you. Point of information, the motion before us, uh, Mr. Vice President, is to amend based on Councilor Darcy's Correct. language. Thank you. Councilor Bradley MacArthur. Yes. Councilor Darcy. Yes. Councilor Dunn is recused. Councilor Durkee. No. Councilor Harris. No. Councilor Katz. No. Councilor LaCava. Yes. Councilor LaFosse. No. Councilor Blank. No. President McMiniman. No. Council O'Brien. Yes. Councilor Paz. Yes. Councilor Stanley. No. Councilor Vidal. No. It's five in favor, eight opposed, one recused. So the motion um, to modify the order does not carry. Okay, so I stole the floor. You do. I move approval of the order as stated. You've heard a sense of the motion. On the motion. And I'd like a roll call, please. Roll call has been requested. Council Bradley MacArthur. Yes. Council of Darcy. Yes. Council of Dunn is recused. Council of Durkee. Yes. Council of Harris. Yes. Council of Katz. Yes. Council of Lacava. No. Council of LaFosse. Yes. Council of LeBlanc. Yes. President McMiniman. Yes. Council of O'Brien. Yes. Council of Paz. Yes. Council of Stanley. Yes. Council of Vidal. Yes. All in favor, one opposed, one recused. Thank you, Mr. Clark. If the, if the clerk could read the next new matter. A request of the mayor to transfer the care, custody, and control of the property located at One Bomb Avenue to the Waltham Public School Department. Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, as I said, there were three questions tonight, Mr. Vice President. Should we purchase it? What do we do with it? Who will have the care, custody, and control? Um, I have put forth that the school department have the purposes for the care, custody, and control for the purposes contained in the taking. And I say that based upon the fact that the property is right next to it. I only anticipate the access. I'm not going to try to go through the neighborhoods, Mount Vernon. I intend to use the right of way through Mount Wally. And I feel that that, you know, would basically limit the number of vehicles going in and out of there. And I'm not intending to have anything else, not having a farm stand or anything there. But so I feel that the school department is the most logical, having, having the property abuts the Waltham High School. 
Council Lacava. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. So did you approach the school department or did they approach you in terms of taking care custody control of this? I had a meeting with them to tell to advise them that I had been in discussions with the city council. So that I did not want to come before you, not having at least I had talked to the superintendent. I brought the superintendent up to the parcel. Um, many of the other school committee members knew where the parcel was. So I did actually, and I can't get into it because it was an executive session, but I did have a discussion with them about whether or not about care, custody, and control. And how, how long ago was this? Uh, within the last couple well, months. So did they have any um, plans at this time? Any ideas of what they'd like to do with this land? Well, the only ideas that were, you know, stated there is that part of the science program right now. So, for example, um, you know, um, general science, biology, all of these things are part of the agriculture and horticulture. To be a true Chapter 74 program, much more would have to be done to have actual people. But at this time, I feel that the educational use would be through the general science and biology and chemistry courses of the current Walton High School. And you said to access that you would do Mount Wally with cars, but would, would there be a way to walk to directly from the, the new high school site, or would they have to get in cars and drive around through the... No. He, uh, may I go over there, Mr. Vice President? You may. So, yep. So right here is my wall. This is the access in. There's a legal access here, legal access here. So I walk both ways. I walk this way, down. Basically comes into the street. Okay. This part here, I walked up and down twice, but this is more treacherous, <coughs> and this comes into the wetlands. So this would more than likely be the way to connect. So there is a, an access, a walking access from the current site? There's, there's like a little path. Okay. Yes. So you would come around here, and then you'd end up right here, and then naturally the high school is like this now, but because the wetland, Replication is there. I wouldn't want them to be going right through the wetland replication. That wetland replication for the uh, intermittent stream has been done and signed off by the oh. online from what okay. I guess. And to do the, what you said, to do the current biology in, in certain school department um, courses, would they be able to, would the school department be able to do that with the current staff on hand? Or would they be coming to us or for, for more staff? I will respectfully ask the superintendent to answer that question. Is he here? He is. Good Welcome evening, Dr. Dr. Regan. Thank you, Councilor. <clears throat> so understandably, this has only been a few months old, but with what the, the current courses do you think you could c take care of that with the current staff or will you be uh, asking for more staff for the science department? No, I think for, for the first layer that the mayor just described, incorporating it into the science program, we could do with the staff that we have. And then to follow up with what the mayor mentioned about Chapter 74, we're looking at a whole new department, department head, teachers, or? Yeah, so it wouldn't be a new department or a new department head. It would fall under career technical education, but it would be a new Chapter 74 program, which takes many years to develop and get approved through the state. That would be a long-range plan that we'd have to put together because that would require additional staffing, likely, uh, or repurposing of existing staffing. We'd have to look at that. And do uh, you see the Waltham School Department headed that way with this land? Um, I, I think I can certainly see us doing the first layer, which is incorporating it into science. Um, the Chapter 74 piece is such an involved process that I think we'd really have to take time to study that and whether or not that is indeed feasible. If we have the interest level among students to uh, enroll in that particular program, which is a part of the process also, seeing if there's interest, otherwise the state wouldn't necessarily approve it. And are you okay? Have you walked with the mayor said that the two ways up to this property and you're, you're comfortable with that, the, the, the students walking the, that path and the safety of all students? 
Well, he, ca- he didn't walk with I me on that. He, he came in through the car. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. I was just asked. We went, we went up to about here, and then we walked around. Correct. In the middle of the summer, we did that. <laughs> well, it was, it was, uh, well, eggplant time, so it had to be August. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Do you think, while it's great, I'm very happy we're we're having building this brand new high school and a, a new curriculum coming in. Do you think it is needed to have this land for the for the science department? Well, I mean, I, I sort of, my philosophy around uh, education is that if we have opportunities to provide a variety of experiences for kids, um, then certainly uh, I would support that. Uh, given the um, adjacency of the land, the fact that the farm is currently active, the fact that the current owner uh, plans to stay on for a little while longer, I think it provides a, a, a good opportunity for kids to engage in something that perhaps otherwise they would not. Um, so from that perspective, I do see it as valuable. Great, and as you said, with the current order staying on for two years, um, is what would be the kind of transition if he's not there? How Do we have you know, someone to take care of the farm? Or that be under, on, being under the care, custody, and control of the school department, is it something that do you think the school department can do, can take care of a five acre farm? If he's uh, gone, uh, when the owner's gone, uh, that's something that we'd have to think through about you know what that looks like, and it's not, um, you know, we do of course have staff that currently take care of grounds, so there are. And I don't think we'd be sort of on our own and putting that on the shoulders of um, of just the students that are involved. Um, but once the owner sort of peels back from his responsibilities, of course, we'd have to have that plan in place to see how we'll maintain it, how much of the land we'd maintain for growing and what other purposes we'd have. Um, there's space there for greenhouse down the road. I mean, there's, there's other opportunities um, there as well. Um, and I guess my, my last question to that, and I, I truly don't know, is do you know how much it costs to maintain a farm, a five-acre farm? to the city's water for that and he put the underground systems in so he has all the irrigation systems in there um, not all of the land is farmland so there's a good part of this land that's forested particularly as you as soon as you go beyond that stone wall it's forested so um, but he has basically put a lot of money into the farm himself and um, that's what he does, you know what I mean? He's done it since he's a you know, young guy. Right. So, and I believe, you know, naturally the irrigation systems would have to be turned on and off. The school department has irrigation systems in most of their things, particularly Larry Field and not the other sites. So I think that um, they know how to do that too. But as far as actual cost, he has indicated to me that he's going to continue to do it. And as you know, he gives away all his protos to um, needy people as well as you know he he grows uh, a lot of vegetables and a lot and he's got a lot of people that want to have the produce too sure I nothing but great respect for Mr. Mantenuto and what he does my concern is are we going to be able to handle it um, when he's gone well if you really handle it like a farm you're only going to um, cultivate a certain amount of it every year because you have to rotate your fields and you have to give them rest so you know maybe what I'll have is them come up with a farm plan and um, no matter what that's what you have to do um, to do it you have to have a farm plan when you can rest when you can do what type of things you have to put in you know all of the stuff in the soil so I, I would imagine in the beginning could I go over there again in the beginning made the pumpkins are grown over here so the last thing is what he's done here he hasn't farmed here yet so this is the only section that he's working on this this was actually a house that was there and that that foundation is still there but he cleaned up all around here you know what I mean so it, it, you know what I mean the, na the neighbors have indicated that they were happy with the cleanup that he did because it was it was really overgrown 
from over here, it was all overgrown. I knew that the original Regal right here, I actually worked with her when I was going to college. And, um, you know, the, far the farm has been run by that family for many years, but we're for I feel we're fortunate. If you have a true science program, it's all about sustainability. At the new high school, the upper deck is supposed to have some of the sustainability, but this is all in tune with all the climate stuff and all that today. That's all part of the science, and that's, I think, where the chemistry, the biochemistry, the biology would all come together here. Plus, you can also provide food for the poor, depending on what they want to make, you know, break even on what they're doing, you know what I mean? And we'd like, like to, them to break even, and then after that, I think it, food should be donated. Because there's a lot. I ran a six acre farm in case you want to know. So you're going to run this farm? No. <laughs> it would be a conflict of interest, but I'm not saying that I don't love farming. So. But, um, but in the same sense, in today's world, the education of this, it, it, there's so many new things about agriculture today and, you know, how to make it not going up with the climate, whether it be what you're using for fertilizer, what you, you know, all organic. And, uh, there's so much to learn today about this. And I... I'm kind of happy that anybody that's interested in biology, and you know, I would say that we would have internships here, you know, like the Summer Works program. They have a Summer Works program as well. You know, what people don't know is the, one of the best things in the world, if you're, if you're a gardener or a farmer, that you, you see it from the beginning to the end, and there's nothing like the taste of vegetables like that. But, the whole sustainability issue, I think, is the key. You got to teach them from seed to tilling, the end of it. So I'm, and I didn't mean to digress. I'm just saying it's not just about farming anymore because it's a very complicated, you know, area now because you're dealing with all the climate. Okay, and I, I, I respect your opinion. No, it's, it's, it's it, I do not disagree with the possibilities of, of what we can do with the educational aspect of it. I just have major concerns. I mean, we're building a brand new high school. We, we I just don't know if, how it's going to be taken care of, handled, um, the cost to run it. And I, 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 I think we're adding on, we're piling on where we shouldn't be. Um, but I, I respect it. I respect what the, the current owner of the property does with his produce. And mm -hmm. I do have one qu more question um, based on what you were saying. You're talking about breaking even and then giving it away. So you, there's plans to, to grow these vegetables and sell them? No, no. What, what he does right now is he gives it away well, to many I'm not food pantries. interested in what he does now. I'm talking about... No, I don't have any intention. But, but the bottom line is if they f truly develop it, you'll have more produce than you need. But... If you're going to be doing some agricultural experiments over there, then those are, those are controlled experiments, okay? Meaning, how do you do this and how do you do that? But I'm talking about the actual farming that you're going to do for production. He's, he's done it for two years. Now, school department may come in and say, well, we want to do various things over here. But he's leaving the equipment, too. He's going to donate the equipment to us, you know, he has the original Arigo One tractor that he did over. He bought two other tractors. You know, he, he has indicated that he's not, if he, go, if he retires. Now, he said to me a minimum of two years. I don't know how he's going to walk away because he loves it. So, but in the same sense, it's great work if you like farming. It really is. And I really believe that if you look at the overall value of it, you're protecting those neighborhoods. Why don't we talk about that? You're protecting this neighborhood. Here's to the left, here's to the right, and here's to this. So, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I would also argue that the neighborhoods would have been protected if the land wasn't cleared, but whatever. Well, but it, with all due respect, that wasn't me. It was I, yeah, fine. yeah. That's, so, that's, so, that's, 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 you know what I mean? And actually, if you go and look, there's pictures of them, you know, Passarellos and everybody. All right, those, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Council LaCava. Council Vidal. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. To you, to the mayor, and perhaps uh, the superintendent. Mayor, so 
I mean, you know, I, I do share some of the concerns that the Ward 5 had. We are going to be getting a five-acre turnkey farm, and yet we don't have a, a set plan. I know that the superintendent referred to the first layer could be done, yet the plan to maintain a turnkey farm, that's what you call it, is a farm that's ready to go. You can go there, start doing, you know, whatever oh, farming No, you things. have to plan. Oh, is that? You have to plant. Right. In other words, the soil has been prepared. It's not the same as the soil that's prepared at the 240 Beaver Street, but he's getting it very close. Right. I, I have seen some of his photos in which he, sh and again, he gave us pumpkins a couple of years ago. And, it, and, and, I, and I, the concern that I have is what if, what if our plan is not ready on time, therefore, this farm or the portion that has been worked on goes into some sort of disrepair or neglect. And you can uh, progress on it. Sorry? And you can progress on it. But. You know, you know what I mean? You could pl plant, plant clover. You know, not, not right. I mean, clover I, I, don't, I don't know enough about farming to even yeah. have a, 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 a so, dialogue about. But all, all, I, all I'm looking at is at a, at a, a assigning care, custody, and control of, of One Balm Avenue to the school department, yet a plan has not been set. Okay, so that's, that's my concern, and I wanted you to reassure me that we're going to be okay if that, that is the case with no plan. Okay, so I have, all, I have 29 budgets that I could respectfully ask that it be transferred to, okay? Or I could put it out, recommend, not, not me, just me, but I could recommend that it be put out to bid for RFP to have somebody else do it. I have not recommended that, and nor am I going to put out an RFP. So. What are the logical ones? Assessors, auditing, building, COA, EMS, engineering, health, IT, fire, law, library, uh, HR, planning, recreation. So there's only really two that come to mind, recreation and schools. So I could g give it to the care custody and control of CPW, and CPW basically maintains. So they would cut the grass, and, and stuff like that. So, of the 29, you know, and I didn't do transportation, veterans, wires, you know, and zoning, so all of those people. So if I went through it all, three come to mind. Public works, school, and recreation. But we have a lot of recreation fields. You know what I mean? So, based upon the adjacencies to the school, that's the one I selected to put forward. Okay, understood. Um, and don't forget, if it goes to recreation, the recreation board would be the one. Right. Yeah. And if it goes to CPW, uh, and there's no board there, the, the director will have to be in charge of maintaining. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I do want this to be part of the school, and as, as the superintendent said, a chapter to expand our chapter seventy-four. You know. Uh, what we offer it that's not going to be overnight it's going to take years no, for us to get it to I will, get to that level i will say that i think i got a letter from essex Ag <clears throat> and the tuition was about twenty nine thousand a year that i have to pay to go to essex Ag mm -hmm. from the school department so it's that's for one student to go to essex Ag. Mm -hmm. so um but i think if you develop a science program that's part of the high school curriculum you will get some that are interested in horticulture, agriculture, open space, environment. I think, especially this generation of student, I think they're very conscious of what we should be doing with the land. And I agree with you. I, I do not disagree with you. Again, the, the concern that I have is having this land be given to the school department yet without a plan. And, and, and not really Facilities the department would yeah. technically be in charge of it, but what I'm saying to you is the key is to get the people trained, mm -hmm. and that's why the owner agreeing to stay on, he said, a minimum of two years. Now, that's what he said to me, but he knows that he has to train somebody to do this, and that includes training the facilities people you know, it's just like um, Leary Field. They had to be trained on, on the systems. I mean, I have to give the school custodians a lot of credit because 
they actually uh, trained on all the HVAC, computerized models, and all of that. And mm -hmm. this, the city side is now, but they were trained from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and I think you know, uh, John Penzone is is a straight shooter, and he'll he'll say you know we need this this this, but I think the summer works program because this is a seasonal thing. You know, when you start your seedlings, things like that. So we're not talking about having it in a full year. This is a seasonal matter because it's a farm. And I'm not going to be growing anything in the winter or over here, I don't think. Okay. Unless they get a greenhouse. But the, the, I would recommend that, you know, they apply for grants for a solar greenhouse. There's plenty of great sun there. I mean, I've never seen um, for a small farm... Uh, he produces Hubbard squash. Very few farmers grow Hubbard squash anymore. Um, at, at the UMass Field Station, they would put Hubbard out to keep um, the animals away from the butternut. So Hubbard squash is a big, huge squash, and believe me, he gets he gets a tremendous um, product out of there. I, you know, in his eggplants. Superintendent. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, it, it, it's it, it, the problem that you have is you need a little bit of help, too. And I believe students can help him during the summer. Okay. And yeah. other people that might want to volunteer, you, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't, they, naturally, they have to go through the school department and get Corby checked and all that. But, you know, it wouldn't be just limited to the high school students if you could get some people. Right. We don't want to people to, you know, plant flowers without telling, you know, going through the right channels or putting flower beds and stuff like that. I understand what you're saying. That's very clear. Now, what the other question that I, that I had here um, is how is, say, for example, the school department doesn't get it all together right away. Um, yep. um, and then I know it's seasonal. I understand that. I mean, that's very clear. Um, could could CPW jump in and kind of make sure it, it it's somewhat maintained? I mean, could, could there be some sort of collaboration among well, departments? The school department has their own maintenance. Well, that's, well, exactly. I mean, I, I, I mean I, I'm just saying so that, um, you know, they'd have to have the equipment, naturally. But, I mean, there's one guy that works in uh, Park and Rec, and he, he's a good kid, Matt. I mean, he's kind of like the, the one that goes around. He'd get that done. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to... That whole crew at CPW Parks Department, and because you know they merge together, but th they take care of a lot of things, including the cemetery. So they have the equipment and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Those I mean, I, but I'm not. I have to say for the record, I, I'm not assigning that to them because if they're listening from home. No, but I, but I, I, I mean, think... I, I I don't intend to have this be a CPW area, but. But I mean, if it, but it, there are opportunities that perhaps we can. Well, if they need help. Sure, there'll be collaboration. Okay, of course. all right, so you thank got, you. Got several people that register in the city's planning department. You have a registered lands, landscape architect. You know what I mean? So there's all kinds of people that can help out. Understood. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Council Vidal. <laughs> Council Blank. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to point out. Um, I went to Minuteman Tech as a post-grad, and I don't know if any of the counselors, I'd invite you all to take a ride over their new school. Um, they have from seedling to germination of seeds to sprouting, they have a horticultural program, um, they grow their own flowers there, and then the produce is, they have a restaurant called Fife and Drum. And they use the produce and the students, all culinary students, cook and they actually serve um, lunches and dinners and if you google it they have uh, coming up in the next couple of months they have um, different lunch programs and dinner and you go eat in the restaurant and the students serve you they cook it they do the whole thing I think the opportunity here is huge it's and they would if they were watching this meeting they would be crawling out of their mind for this opportunity for the students so I thank you for all you're doing Thank you, and the new high school will have a restaurant as well as part of the CVT Career and Vocational Technical Program. Thank you, Council Blank. Council Katz. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice President. Uh, through you, I think I want to ask this to the uh, superintendent. Um, as I, I get excited thinking about the different uses and uh, opportunities, but I also get reminded that we, we have two other farms in the city. So aside from the adjacency, um, what what value um, uh, or how how is this helpful to what opportunities does this bring to the school that the other farmland doesn't? I think the adjacency allows students to access it during the day, so they don't need to be transported. They could walk there. Um, <clears throat> and so I think of, as the mayor pointed out, the science program. Uh, as Constable Blank mentioned, um, and I should have said this earlier, there can be a tie-in to um, our culinary program. Um, it, I could even see uh, a tie-in to our general food services program, which is quite excellent uh, in the uh, in the schools themselves. So, growing produce that's then served in all ten schools through the cafeterias, um, and again, our high school students primarily being responsible for uh, whatever it is that's grown at that time, and seeing that process of from seeds to product and it being delivered and used by those that are cooking the foods, um, either students in the culinary or our professionals that are working in our food services program across all of our different buildings. Okay, how, how far is the farm from the new school, from the school? Okay. Like eight or? Approximately how, how long a walk would it be? Oh, it's, you have to come down. It's probably, it took us about 10 to 15 minutes, but we were feeling around, you know, looking around. So. But if you were just walking, you could do it at least okay. 10 to 15 minutes. Um, uh, second question is um, for, for recreation, does the school department for all of the other fields around other schools, do, do you? I should know this, I mean, I know what I do, but do you allow the public to just go there and hang out and recreate there on weekends and on school time? Or is that different than like city parks? No, there, I mean, we don't have any systems in place that keep people off of the okay. fields um, out of school hours. We do, during school hours, we do restrict use of school fields. So we, we could take this to mean that recreation means it's going to be open for all residents at non-school hours for for open space well there is a gate there. so there's a gate when you come in here near mount wally there is a gate and that gate is usually locked so there is a gate right here so I get the, the bottom line question is, will city residents be able to benefit from this space? They'll be able to benefit. Okay, so if something's under the care, custody, and control of the school committee, during school hours, we're in local parentis, which means that we have a duty to supervise. Right. So that gate would have to be locked during school hours. Um, now, everybody would have to be quarried that comes in because you have access to the student. So if you have access to this, so... We would, we would have to limit access, especially during the school hours. During school hours, but After weekends? After that, if the, it's just like um, the access road. If the access road's closed, you limit. So, But I'm, I'm not saying that people couldn't come in here and go up there, but they would have to be on school property to get there. So this is gated, but the rest of it would have to come into school property to get there. Okay, so on a, on a weekend, though, a Saturday, Sunday, non-school time? Weekend, they could make their way there, but it depends what the school department says. If they say, you know, you, you know, organized use requires a permit or something like that, but if people are just walking you know, around, okay. it, it, you know, the school committee would have to discuss w what, if anything, do they want to put on, uh, do they want to have, you know, trails or anything like that. You know All right, I mean? and my last question is, um, 
about farming, and I'll admit there hasn't been a farmer in my family in probably 140 years on the other side of the earth, although I, I do get credited for a nice lawn and, yes. and some good basil. Um, but I do know this about farming is that it requires heavy equipment and heavy machinery. Um, it, and it, I thought I heard you say at the beginning that there's no intention of hiring a an on-staff farmer aside from um, the current owner who's going to be staying there. Um, is this something that a, a teacher can take on and and hop on a tractor and and yeah. do you know yeah. run that machinery in order to run a farm or do you see something like small and organic? Uh, okay, I can answer that really. So once you till the soil, the rest of it is maintaining it. So usually in the beginning you till and at the end you till. But in between is keeping the weeds out. So, you know, he has a lot of black mastic, you know, whatever they call it, farm mastic. But it's basically during the hot season to make sure the weeds don't overtake your plant and make sure they have sufficient water. So, so the school would get support from CPW for the for the well, tilling? No, I, basically, I recommended that I would have some city workers, students, you know, that I would put this out as a potential area that you could work. So if you want to work for CPW up here, I could do that. But then they also have school, a summer program for the school. So they have their own summer works program. But I'm saying for the city works, I would put at least, you know, four positions out for okay. working up here. All right, thank that you. That would be during a six-week period in the summer. Thank you, Councilor Katz. <laughs> Councilor LaFosse. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, I have one question concerning just the care, custody, and control and how Mr. Mantenuto is going to be there. Would Obviously, to run a farm, you've got fertilizer. I know a lot of his plants he takes from seed, and once you have the, the plant, you're, you're making plants for the following year. But is the running of the farm going to then become a line item in the school's budget for at least the next couple of years? There is a cost associated with doing this. I don't know the answer to that question. Right now, um, the only thing is um, he hasn't indicated that to me. I can find that out for you. Okay. And then sh short of that, you know, it's, you know, as, a, as an Italian with the garden, I, I love a great garden conversation, but I think I've heard enough of gardening and hypotheticals of what we can and can't do and what we might do. So uh, I'd love to make the motion to approve this and uh, move on. Councilor Fossey has moved um, approval of transferring care, custody, and control of one bomb Ave to the Waltham School Department. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. Roll call. Roll call's been requested. Councilor Bradley MacArthur? Yes. Councilor Darcy? Yes. Councilor Dunn recused. Councilor Durkee? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Katz? Yes. Councilor LaCava? No. Councilor LaFosse? Yes. Councilor LeBlanc? Yes. President McMiniman? Yes. Councilor O'Brien? Yes. Councilor Paz? Yes. Councilor Stanley? Yes. Councilor Vidal. No. Eleven in favor, two opposed, one recused. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, everybody. What is the wish of the committee? Excuse okay. me, Jordan. Uh, Councilor Darcy. Take matter off the table. Councilor Darcy makes a motion to take a matter off the table. The citizen input hearing. Hearing everything that we heard tonight, um, 
I think it's important to engage the neighbors because one thing I thought of in the last few moments is a Friends of Arrigo Farm in which the neighbors actually form a, um, um, a neighborhood group to um, help out. And given the fact that there's been no neighborhood meeting due to the fact that the council has to recuse herself, and for full transparency, and this is such an important issue for that whole neighborhood, um, I really think it's, it's um, important for us to reach out to the neighbors, regardless of what the votes were this evening. So I'd like that before the next. Madam President. Sorry, Councilor Darcy. You tabled that matter under the first item that we had. These are three separate items. You tabled that matter with the money. I apologize to you, but this matter is out of order. Uh, President McMiniman has pointed out that the matter was tabled under the first item. Uh, she is correct, and so the matter is I'll just bring that in as a resolution on Thursday, then, for next Monday. What's the wish of the committee? Council passed, moves to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it.